Hi, welcome to another episode of Live on What You Grow. And today I'm going to be preparing this garden bed for the bok choy and some beets and some radishes that I started about a month ago. And just wanted to show you this protection that I created here. And I am gonna be making a video showing you exactly how to make one of these the best method that I know of to protect your leafy greens from deer and from rabbits especially. It's not gonna stop any chipmunk and you're not gonna stop a chipmunk because they will burrow underneath anything to get to your garden plants. But I'm gonna show you, let's get opening this up. I've got some hooks here and I just hook that fence on there. I'm going to take a five gallon bucket of biochar. This is activated biochar. It is not charcoal, it is biochar. And this has been activated for about three months in my cellar. And I'm just going to spread this on top of the soil here. I don't really want to mix it with the soil because I want it to be the fertility that is on top. Now you'll see that I have a potato plant that came up on its own from last year. If you miss a few tubers and don't get them all, then they will come up the following year. Something that is amazing because you harvest them probably in July. So they just stay in the ground dormant from July until April or May. Okay, now I'm going to take some of this leaf mold compost that I made and I showed you last week. And I'm going to put a layer of this also on top of the biochar. This is basically unfinished compost. And you do not mix it with the soil, you just put it on top and you let it act like a mulch to conserve water. To keep the soil from drying out. And also to suppress weeds. and also to provide nutrients for the plants as it breaks down, as it decomposes. Now I'm gonna let that potato grow in here. It's going to grow about this high, so I'm just gonna let it grow right through that fence. You'll be so surprised how little weeds are able to get through this mulch that I'm putting on here. It doesn't seem like very much. Any weeds that do come through are just very simple to just pull out. Now a lot of the ideas that I get for gardening come from YouTube. And I want to encourage you all to take notes whenever you watch any video, including this video, you should be taking notes so that you'll remember the information. You should also take notes on what you do in the garden, because if you're like me, you're going to forget all the things. Everything looks so good when you are watching a how these people are planting their carrots and it just looks like it's a great idea. And then you can't really remember all of the details on how to make that happen. So this is the 
durable tray that I've been talking about that you can go on to our website and you can get these. These are the indestructible ones that you saw me jumping up and down on before. These are the ones that were actually designed by Charles Dowding. So look at how perfect that little pig is. There's no roots that are coming out the bottom because it has been root pruned, which means that this little plug here is full of roots. So what we're gonna do, let me just put that aside for a second. Uh, it looks like that if I just dig down with my hand, stick it in, firm the soil around it. And I would actually be doing this a lot faster if I wasn't having to make a video while I'm doing it. Now, I'm not going to bore you by planting this whole tray. finish the rest off camera, but let me show you these beets. Now I've talked to you about multi-sowing. You're going to see that there are two beets in that one little cell. And most people would look at this and pick the biggest one and then cut the other one off but we talked about multi-sowing and you can actually let both of these beets grow together and you you stop and you wonder you know why do swiss chard and beets and a few other seeds have the multi germs like this and you think well why shouldn't they grow together and you know it's just that you know you get it into a mindset of the um commercialized agriculture and it just doesn't work for them but this is something that will work for us because when these two beets grow together one of them is going to grow a little bit faster than the other one so what happens is that when they start to get around golf ball size you pick the biggest one and then you let the other one continue to grow up to full size so it is a really really good idea so I'm gonna plant those down the other end then we've got some special kind of radishes that grow about a softball size. And supposedly they are very sweet. And I'm always looking for things to put in my smoothies. There's never enough greens for my smoothies. So I'll just plant these. the cells doesn't have one in it. That's what happens. See, look, there's, uh, look, there's three or four beets in that cell right there. And these are ruby queen beets. Plants in that one. Okay, that right there is that, that circling that we were talking about before. It's something that you really don't want to see, but there's quite a bit of roots in this particular one for some reason. You know how that doctors stay say that they're practicing medicine. I think that you can definitely say that about gardeners is that we're practicing gardening because you're always going to be improving on your methods. Especially now, the time that we're living in now, we have such access to really great gardeners and great teachers who can understand the, the biological life in the soil. And I would 
definitely recommend that you study things like that, like Elaine Ingham, who talks about the soil food web, and really to understand the connection of all of the bacteria and the fungi and the nematodes and the protozoa and all of the arthropods and the microarthropods, all of these things that live in the soil that are part of that food web that are very important for our lives. It's important to understand all of that because we're going to make our gardening decisions based upon the knowledge that we have. You know, one thing that is really always funny to me is that when you know, people talk a lot about feeding the soil and not the plants, and yet when you see their gardening practices, you find out that what they say and what they do are actually two different things. They say they're feeding the soil and not the plants, and they don't even know what they're talking about. Just like, if you turn around and take a look at those garden beds over there where the tomato beds are, there's nothing growing in them, but I water them. And people say, why are you watering them? There's nothing growing in them. It's because that I'm feeding the soil and not the plants. You've got to feed the soil all year. When there's no plants in it, you've got to feed the soil. You've got to give it the biochar. You've got to provide the compost for it. it it's something, I, I, I'm just amazed that people say <laughs> that they're that they, that they and, it, and it seems like that they know what they're talking about. I don't feed the plants, I feed the soil. Well, what are you feeding? What, what, what do the bacteria? These are the radishes I'm putting in, by the way. These were multi-sown. There are two radishes in each cell. might be easier just to take them all out of the cell first. Okay, I'm gonna keep this a short video. I've got the rest of these bok choy to plant down there. You don't have to do that on the camera, but I've got the radishes. I got two rows of beets planted and I'll be talking about this structure there's a special tool that you have to make in order to do this, in order to make those bends in this pipe. It is the one thing, this bed is the one bed that the rabbits and the deer did not get last year and they practically devastated the entire rest of the garden. So I'll be doing that probably in the next week or so, I'll be doing that. Okay, I've got them all planted in here and I'm just watering them in. I'm gonna give them a good water, a good soak you might even say. I don't know about you, but whenever I see these plants, they look so gorgeous in there, don't they? And I hate to pick them, but they are going to go into my smoothies and into my breakfast. And like I said, I'm going to be giving them a good soaking because you have to get them established in that soil. A good soaking is going to do that. You know, and this amount of watering that I'm giving them is, it's like raining for an hour. So it's not definitely going to hurt them. I'm not going to drown them. Okay, we'll see you on the next video. Hi, I'm Ann. I'm John's wife. Normally I'm behind the camera, but I came out today to set you straight about the plants that John just put in here. We put in a baby bok choy, not going to grow very big, and besides smoothies, we are going to use that for stir fries. It's really great sauteed up with garlic and onions from the garden. And I wanted to say about the radish that he planted, it's called green luobo, and it's a Japanese radish. It grows long, cylindrical. And we've never tried it before. This is all new to us, so we can't wait to try this. I personally want to try it, fermenting it, along with some cabbage and some carrots. So those are my ideas that we are gonna be using these plants for. 
So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.